Happy Easter, everyone. It's my great joy to wish you a happy Easter to you and your family. Uh, may we always have that Easter joy in our hearts, not just on Easter Sunday, but throughout the Easter season, throughout the year. We are Easter people, my friends. I want to thank all of you who have been able to support us as well, certainly through your prayers, but also through your financial assistance that you've been able to give the parishes uh, throughout uh, these very strange and unusual times. My friends, anything that you can give us certainly helps further the mission and helps us uh, be able to offer you as many resources and uh, maintain our staff as well uh, throughout this time. There are three ways that you can give. You can send in your envelopes if you are signed up for envelopes. We invite you to please send those in every week if you're able. Second way is electronically. You can sign up for online giving. You can have recurring payments every week, which is extremely helpful to us. And we've had quite a bit of increase in people who are doing it that way. Uh, throughout uh, just this past several weeks, uh, as well as a one-time payment, if you would like to make a one-time payment. And the third way is through something called 90 Days Now. This is a new initiative throughout the Archdiocese. Over 100 parishes have signed up for it, and it has been extremely successful. You can give just a little bit every day, and it really adds up over 90 days. This is something, by the way, that you can do in addition to your normal support that you would give weekly to the parishes. So we invite you to consider all of those. Every penny you get, I can assure you, will be poured right back into uh, strengthening our staff here, strengthening the resources that we're able to give you, and to keep our churches open. Have a great Easter, my friends, and thank you again for your prayers and support.
Would the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of your people who have made your own? Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what plot they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although for now, a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, there is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sunday by Pope St. John Paul II on April 30th, 2000, 
the same day that he canonized Sister Faustina, to whom the Divine Mercy was revealed. A saint, the devotion to the Divine Mercy is Jesus' wish that the world take its refuge in him. It's easy to do that. It's easy to take refuge in our Lord and to put our faith and trust in him and in things that we can see. It's a lot harder to trust in that which we cannot see. This is what the first disciples of Jesus were feeling in these first days after the resurrection. We hear in the Gospel that the disciples were gathered together, locked away in a room out of fear. This Jesus whom they had left everything to follow, this man who said that he was the long-awaited Messiah who would save Israel, had been killed. With only John remaining at the foot of the cross, if any of them had been there on that good Friday of our Lord's crucifixion, I am sure that their thoughts would have been the same as the cheers from the onlookers. If you are the Christ, come down off that cross. And yet, he didn't. Was he not the man of Messiah that he said he was? And so gathered together out of fear, of the uncertain and unknown future, they stayed locked away. They loved Jesus, but it was hard to trust what they could not see. And what they did not see was Him as the Messiah. But in their fear and uncertainty, out of love for them, Jesus comes to them. He stands in their midst and says, Peace be with you. He shows them Himself. He reveals himself to them so that they may see and believe and trust. And they do, but not all. Thomas the twin, not having been with them, hears the account from those present and still uncertain and afraid, doubts. And so for his sole benefit, out of love for Thomas, and so that Jesus' own words which he spoke before Pilate just days earlier, that he might not lose any which the Father had given him, would be fulfilled. Jesus returns to them, again walked away, and once more says, Peace. And turning to Thomas, invites him to touch the nail marks in his hands and to place his hands in his side. With that, Thomas believes, exclaiming, My Lord and my God. And then for our benefit, and the benefit of the generations before us, and the generations yet to come, Jesus says, You believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who have not seen and still believe. We are living in a very blessed and grace-filled time. In these days, kept from coming to church and from receiving our Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, Jesus now asks us the same question he posed to Thomas. Do we believe only because we have seen? And the group of disciples who Jesus appears to is a prefiguring of what we experience now, one of the most important aspects of the church, the domestic church. The church of the home and of the family. The church isn't just a building. The church is the communion of all the faithful on earth together with those suffering in purgatory and those triumphant in heaven. We are the church, and while physically coming to church and attending Mass is important when and while we can, especially in these days where we are unable to do so. We cannot underestimate or downplay the importance of the domestic church, the church of the family. Lumen Gentium from the Second Vatican Council says in the domestic church, quote, The family is, so to speak, the domestic church. In it, parents should, by their word and example, be the first preachers of the faith to their children. They should encourage them in the vocation which is proper to each of them, fostering with special care, Vocation to a Sacred State. And then the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops adds, This means that it is in the context of the family that we first learn who God is, and to prayerfully seek His will for us. 
In the following, you will find some suggestions on how to build your domestic church through a life of prayer that can help all members of your family. A grandmother stopped a priest after Mass one day and complained to him that her grandchildren didn't know the Our Father and the Hail Mary, and shame on him and what was he going to do about it. When she finished, the priest turned to her and said politely but directly, I am sorry to hear that, but if your grandchildren do not know those very basic prayers, that's not my fault. That's on your family. And he is correct. Just as families and homes make up neighborhoods, and neighborhoods make up municipalities, and municipalities states, and so on, it is the domestic church begun in the family, which is the foundation and building block of the larger parish church community. But it must start before we get to the doors of our church buildings. I was so motivated and inspired and thankful to see a few of the families I am friends with on social media posting their new Sunday routine or the ways in which, as the domestic church, they celebrated their own Easter tree, things I would never have thought to do. Parents reading the gospel and then washing the feet of their children on Holy Thursday, explaining to them why it is that they were doing what they were doing. To their own veneration of the cross with a simple wall crucifix on Good Friday, or making their own Paschal candle by buying a plain white color candle, having their kids decorate and paint on them with Christian symbols, the candle which they will then light as they watch Mass together online or on TV on the following Sundays. And these things, especially the Paschal candle, are things perhaps that families still might be able to do, even once this pandemic is over. We keep Advent rites in our homes and on our tables during Advent. Why not our own version of the Easter candle during Easter? In these days where the church buildings are closed, the importance of instructing and the continual handing on of the faith falls even more now to the domestic church, to parents, not parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles, where, like in the first days and the weeks after the resurrection, families today may find themselves locked away, and perhaps fearful and uncertain. But even in these days, unable as we are to come to our church buildings and to receive communion, we are in a better position than Thomas was, who needed to see Jesus physically to believe. Because, thankfully, through modern technology, Jesus is still able to come into your locked rooms, to come into your domestic churches, to be present with you and to make his presence known to you, and speaks to you the same words as he did 2,000 years ago to the disciples locked away and fearful, peace be with you. And so as Peter tells us at the end of his first reading, do not be unbelieving but believe. In the hope of Jesus' own divine mercy, may you take your refuge in him from the locked rooms of your homes and from your domestic churches. And may you hear the Lord say to you, Blessed are you who cannot be here, but still believe. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us then, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. Placing our hope in our risen Lord, let's offer to him now our prayers and petitions. For the Church, that is the body of the risen Christ here on earth, God's Holy Spirit may guide us in proclaiming the truth and hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For peace and justice in the world, may Easter grace be with all nations and peoples in turning away from division. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For those who struggle each day to make ends meet, may God grant them the spirit of fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all doctors, nurses, first responders, firefighters, police officers, grocery store employees who work every day to keep everyone safe during this pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christians may develop an increased awareness of love for and devotion to the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For priests, especially the priests of our collaborative, without whom we would not have the Eucharist, and for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religiously consecrated life, and sacramental marriage, especially from our collaborative, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That our prayers for all those who have died and for the souls of purgatory, may they know the mercy of God and the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the attention of this Mass for the people of the collaborative of the Catholic Parish of Stoney, and for each of the attentions which you bring to this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Amen. 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 Almighty and ever living God, we ask you to hear and grant our prayers in accord with your will. For we unite our core prayers to those of the Immaculate and the Glorious Virgin Mary, and speak in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has risen from the dead. Amen. Right, 
just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Passover's joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have turned my mind, but will say a word in my soul shall be healed. Prayer of spiritual communion for those who cannot now receive. My Lord Jesus Christ, I truly believe that you are present in this most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. As if you have already come, I unite myself wholly to you. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Amen. Corpus Christi Custodian, amen.
rejoice and be glad over Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord has truly risen. Alleluia.